Stay ahead of the game with our weekly economic insights where we will break down the latest financial news clearly and easily. Hi, I am Soumya. In today's video, we will discuss the latest domestic and international economic developments to equip you with the knowledge you need to make better financial decisions. The personal finance space in focus this week and we'll start with the World Bank's projection for India's GDP growth and its impact on your personal finances. Then the government's decision to provide housing assistance under the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana and the recent surge in onion prices to the new traffic rules. We'll look into the details and see how these developments affect you. We'll also discuss the RBI's proposed digital payment intelligence platform, new SEBI regulations for DMAT and mutual fund accounts, the latest CPI inflation figures and Saudi Arabia's potential shift away from the petrodollar system. Finally, we'll look at how market indices have performed this week. Let's start with World Bank's forecast on India's GDP growth. World Bank said that the India will remain the fastest growing of the world's largest economies, although its pace of expansion is expected to moderate. After a high growth rate in 2023-24, to 24, a steady growth of 6.7% per year on average is projected for the three fiscal years beginning in 2024-25. to 25. Let's check with our expert stakes section to see what our experts think about this. C. A. Arvind Rao is joining us, founder of Arvind Rao and Associates, who is sharing his viewpoint on this report. Yes, so this recent confirmation or reaffirmation by the World Bank about India's uh, aggregate growth rate for the next three years is a real confirmation about the India growth story. And uh, uh, we have been witnessing the whole improvement in corporate profits which in turn is reflected in the way the Indian stock markets have uh, given the kind of returns over the last two to three years. So uh, when we look at our neighboring countries and, the, and their growth rates, India's growth rate, although a bit uh, uh, moderately uh, aggressive, is still a lot better than uh, like a predicted growth rate of US, which is at around 2.5. So, this reaffirmation of the growth rate speaks fantastic about uh, the corporate performances, which will get reflected in the stock prices. And I think that's what we see the stock markets to touch higher highs in the coming uh, couple of years. So, a uh, great thumbs up for India and uh, corporate performance. Now, let's talk about government's commitment to provide house. The government has announced its commitment to providing housing for all by deciding to assist in constructing three crore rural and urban houses under the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana. This decision aims to address the housing needs of the people and ensure that every citizen has access to better quality of life. Houses built under Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana will include basic amenities such as toilets, LPG connections, electricity and tap water. Experts believe this move will create more opportunities for home ownership among urban and rural population, fostering socio-economic stability. The expansion of PMAY is expected to feature a higher eligible carpet area compared to the earlier credit-linked subsidy schemes, making it more accessible to potential home buyers in the affordable and mid-housing segments. Moving on to the recent surge in onion prices. Onion prices have risen sharply by 30 to 50% in the past two weeks due to the reduced supply and increased demand ahead of Eid al Adha or Bakrai. The average wholesale price of onion at the Lassal Gaon Mandi in Nashik increased from Rs 17 per kg on May 25th to Rs 26 per kg on June 10th. The primary reason behind this price hike is the imbalance between the demand and supply. As farmers are holding on to their stocks in anticipation of higher prices due to a predicted decrease in the rubby crop for 2023 to 24. The government has imposed a 40% duty on onion exports until March 31st, 2025, with current restrictions on exports except on certain nations. This surge in onion prices is likely to affect the household budgets of most families as onions are a staple ingredient in the Indian cuisine. Let's take a look at new traffic rules. Increased costs for traffic violations can burn a hole in the public's pocket. Recently, the Motor Vehicle Act in India has been updated with stricter penalties for breaking traffic rules. For instance, 
underage drivers caught behind the wheel could now face a hefty fine of Rs 25,000 and lose their vehicle's registration. Adults driving without a valid license might be fined between Rs 1,000 to Rs 2,000. These changes aim to curb unsafe driving practices and ensure road safety. Moreover, starting June 1st, people can now take their driving test at approved private centers, which aims to make obtaining a license more convenient and accessible. These adjustments are designed to enhance road safety, streamline the driver licensing process and reduce traffic incidents on Indian roads. Let's now discuss the RBI's proposed digital payment intelligence platform. The Reserve Bank of India has proposed the establishment of a digital payments intelligence platform to combat fraud and enhance consumer trust in digital payments. A committee led by AP Hota, former MD and CEO of NPCI will assist the creation of this platform, which will leverage advanced technologies like AI and machine learning to mitigate payments fraud risk. Experts believe this initiative will boost public confidence in digital payment system, leading to a broader adoption and usage. The platform is expected to create a safer digital payments environment, prioritizing customer protection and aligning with the RBI's effort to introduce guidelines surrounding data protection, cybersecurity and KYC procedures. For the common man, this means a more secure and reliable digital payments ecosystem. Moving on to new service regulation for DMAT and mutual fund accounts. In a relief to investors, the Securities and Exchange Board of India has announced that the DMAT accounts and mutual fund folios won't be frozen for non-submission of nomination details as the deadline was June 30th, 2024. This decision aims to make it easier for stock and mutual fund investors to comply with regulations and ensure investors' convenience. SEBI has also decided that payment including dividend, interest or redemption payment previously withheld by listed companies RTA for want of choice of nomination shall now be processed accordingly. Investors holding securities in physical form will be eligible to receive payments and lodge grievances or avail service requests from the RTA even if they have not submitted the choice of nomination. While new investors will still be required to provide nomination details for DMAT accounts and mutual fund folios. Existing investors will be encouraged to update their nomination details through regular communication from depositories, fund houses and RTAs. Let's now take a look at the latest CPI inflation figures. Based on the Consumer Price Index, India's retail inflation fell to a 12-month low of 4.75% in May from 4.83% in April, mainly due to high base effect and easing food prices. Food inflation decreased marginally to 8.69% in May from 8.70% in April, with drop observed in the prices of spices, meat, fish, sugar, milk and vegetables. Core inflation also eased to a series low of 3.1% in May from 3.2% in April, largely due to low housing inflation. Economists believe that softer-than-expected inflation backed by a dip in core inflation suggests that the price pressures this year will be more subdued than the RBI's forecast of 4.5% for FY25. This means a slight easing in a cost of living for the common man, potentially leading to increased purchasing power and more affordable goods and services. Now let's discuss Saudi Arabia's potential move away from the petrodollar system. Saudi Arabia's decision not to renew its 80-year petrodollar deal with the United States signifies a major shift in the global financial landscape. The deal expired on June 9th and had been a cornerstone of the United States' global economic dominance. By not renewing the contract, Saudi Arabia can sell oil and other goods in multiple currencies, including the Chinese RMB, Euros, Yen and Yuan, instead of exclusively in US dollars. The potential use of digital currencies like Bitcoin may also be considered. This development is anticipated to hasten the global shift from the US dollar and could significantly impact global financial market and trade dynamics. For India, the implication could be mixed. 
while a shift to other currencies like the rupee for oil trade might reduce transaction cost and strengthen the rupee. Let us wrap up with this week's market performance. On June 14th, the Indian stock market closed positively, with the BSE Sensex gaining 139 points and the NSC Nifty 50 rising 55 points. The previous day, on June 13th, domestic institutional investors sold stocks netting a rupees 553.88 crores outflow, potentially for profit taking or portfolio adjustments. Foreign institutional investors also showed a net selling of rupees 3033 crores signaling a shift in their sentiment towards the Indian market. That's it for today. This week's Economic Insight taught us about significant changes and plans across different sectors. Amidst all these changes, one thing remained the same. The financial world continues to evolve rapidly. So stay alert, stay informed, and most importantly, stay focused on managing your money wisely.